if you are getting the Santander or the Bilbao ferry, it's the 33 hour job back to the UK. Um, here's a few tips about what to expect and maybe um, what to take on your journey. Specifically as well, if you've booked the seat only. So if you haven't booked a cabin, if you're traveling by yourself and you think, do you know what, I'll do it in the seat version. I'll show you exactly what it's like, what to take. So let's get started. So I'm just coming into Santander at this point and then coming up there's a really sharp turning on the right which is what you take apparently to go to the ferry. However, this van put me off and I ended up missing that turning and going straight ahead. But luckily the signage is quite good. It takes you through Santander in the main sort of city part. Uh, you'll come across some traffic jams as you can see. But then you're looking for a very sh short little turning on the right here. Um, again, it's another narrow little bit. There's some people double parked, but it takes you directly up to the uh, the port, as you can see in ahead of me. Luckily, this GB plate in front of me uh, showed me exactly where to go because I just followed them. And this is the port. So we're now inside the thing. The uh, guard are hot on it. I've just had a sniff of dog in my van. Um, but they're doing some works over there. But if you turn up early, this is what you get. You get access to the shop and whatever's. So you can get an English breakfast for 10 euros. Uh, it looks like they do a duty free and you're allowed to take your pet inside if you've got one so <clears throat> that's a little bit of handy info but um yeah just to sort of say uh they are very i did get stopped on the way out into spain and obviously i've just been stopped again on the way in to the port um with sniffer dogs <laughs> I'm gonna get solar so my fridge will keep working I think I think that looks like like that door comes down we will see but that yellow door looks like that comes down uh, right anyway hopefully I'll get solar because my fridge is on right we're on the boat so I've put a little handy kit this together which hopefully you'll find handy and helpful um, but I've traveled over obviously on the way out here and now I'm traveling back so this is a few things that I learned from my way out um, so if you've booked a seat specifically you'll find this helpful because one of the things that you get if you've booked a seat only and not a cabin is access to a communal shower um, which I used a hell of a lot on my way out here because I knew that proper hot showers were going to be a luxury so I was getting as many as I could on the way out the only thing I didn't take was a towel I packed really lightly I just took my rucksack uh, and a small blanket and didn't really know what to expect and so this is what I've learned and so hopefully it'll be a bit of an easier journey on the way back so first things first I'm packing my full-size sleeping bag that is because you'll see um, when we get on the boat but rather than stay in the chair, I moved out to the lounge area. And the good thing about the sleeping bag is it's bigger than the blanket I took and you can pull that up over your head so you can just sort of get any light out of your eyes and a little bit more sort of sound deadening type thing. Um, so full size sleeping bag, obviously change of clothes. I've got a change of t-shirt and underwear, a pair of socks just in case you get um, cold feet. Nothing worse than cold feet when you're trying to sleep towel so i'm taking my little microfiber towel a hoodie just in case it gets chilly and you need to keep warm nothing worse than if you haven't got anything to keep warm 
your pyjamas, your toiletries, your normal stuff. Don't forget your sun cream for when you're going out on deck. I've taken some small um, shampoo and like body wash, bottle of water just to keep you hydrated in those times when maybe, you know, middle of the night and everything's shut. I'm taking a thermal flask cup with me this time so that when I get a cup of tea, I can actually take it with me if I want to go and sit out on deck and not have to sort of, you know, swish about with a, a little cardboard cup. So that'll keep it warm for a little bit longer as well. Um, that is a power bank for my phone because it's a 33 hour journey and my phone's not going to last that long and a, and a cable. I do think there are um, charging ports on the boat. I wasn't really sure where they were because I took a power bank, but I think there are charging ports on the boat. Um, some sweets just to sort of dip into to keep you going if you're feeling a bit queasy especially that will keep you sort of topped up energy wise some seasickness tablets although hopefully this time of year the sea's nice and calm so we won't need them I didn't need them on the way out actually and then some just general sort of painkillers just in case you get a headache or anything so I'm going to pack it all into a big big bag I'm also going to take my rucksack so the big bag I'm going to leave in the room because you get a key card to enter the room where you sleep, which is the uh, the recliner chair room, which is private for only people who have, you know, got the ticket to use the chairs in that room. So that bag with all of this sort of stuff, you know, toiletries and sleeping bag will just stay in there and I won't have to carry that around the boat. And then I will take my rucksack just to take the valuables. So things like passport, phones you know that sort of stuff so see you on the other side what you've got to remember when you first pull in here is what deck you are on here and what set of stairs you are on here now they're color coded so so that when you come back you know where you're parked it's a bit like a multi-story car park when you go shopping so we're going to go and look and see what deck we're on and uh what set of stairs we are near we're parked on yellow stairs deck five which as you can see, five is the bottom one. Um, but we're sleeping on deck eight, which is where you can eat and drink as well. You've got a tapas restaurant. I think the main restaurant is on seven, I think. Yeah, the main restaurant is on seven, but you've got a bar cafe and a tapas restaurant on eight, which is our floor. And reserved seating lounge is towards the front of the boat so I'm just going to make our way there we're now on deck eight so if you've booked one of these seats um you're given a number uh, mine was 12 i think this time but if you're anywhere near this window you've got two problems that is one people peer in all night and they sort of do that through the glass because they want to see what's the reserved seating lounge all about um, <clears throat> and then the second thing is as soon as the sun rises you're going to be woken up with the glare coming through there it's like a curtainless window it's just sort of semi frosted so sit in one of the other seats um, down this end away from that window because this area although there's about 50 seats in it I, on the way out, I had six people in this room. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you can spread out and move about. The only thing is if you're in someone else's seat, then obviously you're gonna have to move, but I very much doubt it. There's gonna be plenty of other spaces. Now, as you can see, there are two buttons. One does the footrest. I think that one does the footrest, which flaps out, but this is very slidey in the night. Um, your feet slide on it. And then the second one does the back part. So you recline it back like a normal aeroplane chair type thing. Now, I'm 5'4", and I'm already touching that seat. And if I try and put my feet up, you see it's very slippery. That's the extent to which it reclines. So if you are taller than 5'4", you're not gonna be able to recline comfortably fully. The other thing is, imagine this is like a dormitory really, because you've got, you're sharing a room with other people. So if you've got someone who snores, um, 
last time I had someone who snored. I think he'd been spent his night in the bar and so when he came in he was just snoring his head off. The other thing was there was one man, I think he must have been woken by the man who was snoring and he was pacing around the room, which that woke me up more than the person Midian, snoring. So, the options are, like I mentioned, let's uh, make sure we've got the key card with us. So, the options are sleeping. This is the open plan seating area, which doesn't tend to be too busy during the night um, because there's nothing up this end of the boat other than the seating lounge. The bar is halfway sort of in the middle of the boat, so most people that are up late will be down that end. And this area doesn't really tend to get that busy. Um, most people that slept in the uh, seating lounge did come out and sleep on these seats because they are flat and you've got a lot of bench area to yourself and so people tended to sort of come out here and sleep on these cushioned bench seats rather than on those uh, recliner seats which didn't recline fully. I need to pull this out slow. So, as you can see, that outdoor seating area is quite big. There's plenty of seating all the way around, which gives you plenty of opportunity to lay down flat as well. <clears throat> the only thing is, obviously, you've still got the window issue. Well, you've got two issues. Obviously, it's an open area, but the bar is at the other end of the boat. So, not many people are hanging around this end of the boat late at night. They're more up that end if they are at the bar. And I can't remember what time the bar shuts. But um, yeah, so that end of the boat is better to sleep. That is why, for two reasons, I said bring a hoodie and bring a sleeping bag because with that, I'll be able to pull that right up. It's got a little hood on it. And same thing with the hoodie. If I needed to, or if I got chilly, I can always pull it up over the head, which can block your, your eyes out. Now, when I was on here last time, there was a notice saying you could buy a sleeping pack from reception. And I think reception is down on deck seven. Um, just underneath the bar area so you can always go to the help point and sort of say you're sleeping if you forgot your bag or you, you know you want an eye mask or something like that I think it's got essentials in it like a, a small blanket an eye mask maybe a toothbrush things like that um, but that is a little tour of this seating area so if you've booked one of these seats you know you're on your own you think you would rather you know you can do by getting by without a cabin for the night um, they're some of the things to consider there are options like I said obviously it's a little bit more luxurious if you do have your own cabin um, but it was completely fine last time I did it on the way out and uh, yeah you can leave all your heavy stuff that, you know you don't mind leaving behind there so you don't have to lug it about on the boat and I'm gonna go off for a shower there are the toilets and showers deck eight Right, here we are, deck eight. The back of the boat is just there. So that's the outside. So this is where the toilets and showers are. Deck eight, just by the um, back of the boat when you go out on deck. So, you can lock the door. This is a little look at the shower, which has got a lovely little head with four different settings. It's uh, got a very good pressure and temperature is obviously lovely. You've got a little soap dispenser there. You've got your toilet and your toilet roll holder and the soap dispenser and your hand dryer. Um, the only thing about this is that is the tap, sensor tap, which comes out hot. So if you want to brush your teeth, you've got to do it with hot water, which is fine. Seeing as my last one was on the beach a few days ago, I'm going to have a lovely hot shower. Just waiting for the canteen to open. There's a little bit of confusion on board. Um, look at the time in the top left hand corner. It'll show you the time that it's operating on, which is UK time in this occasion. But anyway, it's, <laughs> dinner is an hour later than everyone was anticipating, or the people that are turning up down at the restaurant. Um, but just to note, you get a free course meal on the night 
of your sailing. So for example, my I got on here at two o'clock today and this will be my first night on the boat. We land tomorrow night. So you get a meal for the night that you're on the boat, a free course meal, and you only pay for your drinks, um, which is great. And then the next day you get a breakfast, but you get the continental breakfast, which is like a cup of pastries, a cup of tea, you know, you can, I think you can help yourself to tea a few times actually. Um, but yeah, it's a big continental through all the, all the usual sort of stuff and that's included in your, in your ticket, well it is with me, which is the Brittany Ferries um, Galicia, which is the Galicia. If you can, remember, turn your alarm off. I forgot. So I hope this video has been informative and helped you out. If you're thinking about booking a seat instead of a cabin, hopefully it's answered some of your questions and uh, you know what to expect. If you haven't yet checked out the Let Us Live website, go to www.letuslive.co.uk. It is a website that is inspired by motorcycles and adventure. So head over that way, put Tony reviews in the checkout and you get a little discount there. Until next time, safe riding, safe driving, happy adventures, and I'll see you in the next one.